Hello and welcome back to another Best of 2022. And right now at the start of the year, I know a number of you going into the first quarter of the year are looking at NASs for photography. Yes, being a photography NAS user does fall into different brackets, whether you're editing RAW from that last big shoot from the last wedding or the Sahara, or you're a simple user that's got a few decades of photos that you just want to organize and enjoy and share with your friends and family. Photography is such a diverse platform that it can become so, so complex to choose the right network attached storage device to store your data. Maybe till now you've had all your data living on the likes of Google Photos and you've been enjoying it there, but you realize after a while that since they started saying you can't have any more than I think it's 15 gig or whatever it was and they've said to you, you're gonna to have to pay a tenner a month if you want more data you suddenly realize mm, I really don't like my data living on there when a year from now when I'm 80 to 120 quid in the hole that my data still has to live there I'm gonna to have to buy something to put it on eventually so I might as well bite the bullet and do it now and that's what I'm gonna talk about today the NASs that you can use for photography from the very simple user that just wants to keep a record of their photos all the way through professional editors that want to share their photos in the most attractive way possible with their clients and in-house for editing. So in order to choose the right photo uh, photographer NAS, we're going to have to have some rules because quite frankly with NAS being around now for more than 20 years in its current form, there's a lot. There's thousands upon thousands of different devices to choose from. And even if you remove anything but the last three to four years, that still leaves you with hundreds upon hundreds of NAS to choose from. So let's go through my parameters. How have we finalized it down to our perfect three? Nice and simple. First and foremost, all of the NASs have to be incredibly user-friendly. I'm not going to settle for any NAS that people don't have the first clue how to do. These NASs have to be as usable as an operating system they have to be usable to someone who as soon as they got into the interface everything feels intuitive it doesn't if it doesn't have that they're not going to make it onto my list and i'll be honest that's got rid of 50 percent of the nas brands already because some of them and whether it's now simple server or just file sharing use don't keep it user friendly. They certainly don't integrate it or present it with photography in mind and more file management. Second thing, I'm only going to talk about NAS brands and their solutions if they have AI powered search and recognition. Now, for those that aren't aware, if you are coming away from Facebook photos or Google photos or Apple photos, basically all of those platforms, they all integrate AI photo recognition. That is that although you might have an album, you know that you went to Tahiti, you know you went to Tahiti with that you know that girl Sharon when you were there you bumped into that man at the bottom of the temple you had some noodles or something or rice that sounds terribly racist doesn't it um, you had something to eat of the local culture's cuisine and then you went out for the evening for a show you went back to the hotel and you repeated it seven times and went on the plane home now you took all those photos you might have taken 800 photos on that holiday you didn't name them all they're all called ing037 stuff like that ai powered photo recognition allows an AI to analyze the photos and therefore identify trees, people, food, locations, geography. And then if you search for cuisine, theater, plane, Sharon, if you search for those things, it will find them by analyzing the photos. Now, when you do this online, it uses online servers and online cloud servers to do it. But when you're using a NAS, you want AI powered photo recognition to be in the NAS. You want that to work even if you connect the, disconnect the device from the internet. So I'm only going to talk about NASs that feature uh, facial recognition and thing recognition or uh, sorry, either or of those. If they don't have it inside, we're not going to talk about it. Next, they have to all integrate a professional sharing option. And by that, what I mean is we all know that NAS is generally like files online. You can just create a little share link, email it to someone, and then they can access the file. That's fairly known by this point. But if you're a professional photographer, maybe a wedding photographer, or you take photos, maybe you're a texture photographer who uploads photos of textures for 3D modeling companies or games development, you want to have a kind of graphical interface that you can go right these are the photos i have only these that are watermarked and these photos are only valid for a certain amount of time and they are presented in a professional fashion not just file breadcrumbs all down the screen whatever nas are going to be chosen for these three have to integrate both a personal but also more importantly a professional user interface that can be utilized and shared with clients friends or family next 
all of the NAS solutions that I'm talking about today for photography have to support all of the operating systems and platforms. So that's Mac, that's Windows, that's iOS, that's Android, uh, that's Linux, that's Ubuntu. They have to support it. And by support it, I don't just mean can use it. There have to be applications tailored to photography available on all of those platforms there. So it's very important that all of those are available. Finally, all of these have to allow the integration and utilization of metadata. Now, for those that aren't aware, metadata, most photos you take in the last few years on any modern camera or phone have a whole bunch of metadata in the background. Yes, it contains the size of the photo, but a lot of the time it contains the location of where the photo was taken, particularly if it's a mobile, thanks to geolocational tracking. On top of that, the camera that took it, the ISO, the aperture, the resolution, lots and lots of information all tailored in because that can assist you with searching with it can assist you with editing and most photographers professional or even middle grade want to know that information so all of that needs to not only be accessible but integrated into the photo platform and all three of the solutions that i recommend today have that feature so those are my rules let's go through it and talk about what are for me the three recommended analysis for photography right now at the start of 2022 unsurprisingly and it's been in my top photography recommendation NAS for at least 18 months to two years now but it's going to be this the Synology 920 plus now Synology for photography they go together very well Synology already has a very Mac aesthetic they have very much that kind of design built into it and they're very heavily trying to target Mac users as much as they can whether it's iOS live photos or integration with Mac OS with improvements happening in Active Backup Suite and Drive in real time now as soon as Mac integrate those things. Um, it is a great little system that for its price point does it all. So arriving about $500 to $550 if you ship around it includes, along with a myriad of other applications and services for backup, synchronization, access, safety, multimedia, virtual machine surveillance, and more, also features Synology Photos. Synology Photos, as an application, is great. It used to be two apps, which were Moments and Photo Station, and then it integrated them. And although some services are still yet to be reinstated from one or the other, Synology do promise that they are all coming in one shape or form in due course. Photo recognition with facial recognition is all built in. There is the two door area there. We can switch between your personal space and your shared space, that professional window there, um, with a creational filter control as well as smart profile, uh, smart album creation, which allows you with all of the use of that metadata to go, I want to see all the photos that have got these four people that I've tagged and named. I want that to only be in these two countries and regions, and I want it to happen between this time frame you can enter that in a very intuitive way by the filter and it will give you those photos and within two clicks you can turn that into an album which you can then share within two clicks with lots and lots of integrated options for control and sharing all built in on top of that um, Sonality Photos is having further updates in 2022 with regards to the mobile and all the things it can do as well as shared spaces and pool albums which allow multiple users to interact and send photos with relative ease to a single album with control and authorization and credential control via main admin user. And again, you can just upload a couple of decades of photos onto this, let it analyze it with the AI there, and then it will give you a whole bank of pictures of people where it will go, we've noticed 139 pictures of this guy in different photos with face in a different way, you give him a name and boom. After that, every time you upload a photo of that man, it will recognize them moving forward. Again, some of the services that people have wanted for a long time, again, more importantly, object recognition, the ability to recognize things, not just people, is yet to be integrated, but it will come. It was in Synology Moments, and it will be in Synology Photos. And again, when that does arrive, great, but it's not a reason to hold out for it. It's still a great NAS right now at the start of 2022, and I can't see them replacing this until at least late spring, maybe even early summer with a 922 Plus. Now, the next solution is where we start to tippy-toe away from just streaming and sharing our photos and more towards the world of editing. 
This is, I would say, the perfect middle ground, this next NAS, between the photo editor and the photo sharer, archiver, cataloger, whatever you want to call it, semi-professional. It is the QNAP TSH973AX, knocking around for about $1,000. So again, more, almost double that of the 920. The um, TSH973AX, or just the AX, as I'm going to call it from now on, because that name is too long, um, integrates so many modern features of storage that in its and of itself, if, the more you read about it, the more you realise how great it's going to be for photography. So let's start light. The CPU inside, it's not integrated graphics, but it is a great file management CPU, the um, AMD Ryzen Embedded V1500B. It also arrives with 8 gig of memory by default that can be upgraded all the way to 32 gig. And again, for those dealing with raw, big old photos, that's going to be a blessing. But what's really interesting is this NAS not only has five bays of storage, so again, hard drive storage, yum yum, with 20 TBs there, great to hear. So even in a RAID 6, you're looking at a lot of storage. But on top of that, I hate seagulls, on top of that, there's also two SATA SSD bays and two U2 NVMe SSD bays as well. It's a nine bay storage system and it allows you to have three different storage areas for different proposed utilization. You can mix them all together in a tiered storage if you choose where the system as files get more regularly accessed will move data onto the fast areas as they're accessed more as well as use it for caching. But what's really cool there is you've got a single big RAID area of hard drives. You've got the SSD SATA layer there and the SSD U2 NVMe layer, the super fast one there at the bottom, achieving thousands of megs per second. But then you find out the system has got 10 gigabit Ethernet on the rear. That means that using a Mac or a Windows machine connected there, you can directly cable in to that NAS, the 973AX, and edit RAW on there. You can edit raw photos. Again, that's using your proprietary software, your, your Photoshop elements, you know, all of that stuff. You can connect uh, Premiere, whatever. You can connect your uh, via a single cable to that NAS. Then you can set up like an iSCSI target and use your localized software to edit massive photos. This counts for video editing as well. But again, you can do it that way or you can patch the NAS into a 10 gigabit Ethernet switch, and then multiple people can edit the files on that NAS. Of course, then they might be using one GBE or one gigabit Ethernet, but this is still a NAS that can output via that single port 1,000 megabytes per second, and you can choose whether you want that to come from the hard drives, go to the SATA SSDs, or the NVMe SSDs. You can go to all of them. You can go to all, some, or create as many volumes and uh, on top of the storage pools as you choose. There's even support of ZFS if you choose, a much faster file system to work with. And then on top of that, along with the caching benefits of that, there's also two 2.5 GBE ports there on the rear. The system allows you to have up to 15 gigabit or 1,500 megabytes per second connected bandwidth to a switch and therefore shared with multiple users on the local area network. There is even two NV, uh, sorry, um, USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports built onto the front of it. So if you're a photographer who takes advantage of a high def camera, and then when you get back from every shoot, you put your camera down, you're charging your batteries over there, you can set it up that you connect this system via a USB port to the NAS, and it will automatically back up the camera or a USB, as long as it's USB supported, and you can go to mass storage mode. You can just send all the footage onto the NAS as a backup. And you can do that periodically with every backup being parallel or just overwriting the old one and just keeping the new files. And then with the NAS, you can create a multi-storage backup routine to another NAS, to the cloud, to another area. It's this, you know, so many backup options there. Alongside this, I haven't even talked about QNAP's own photo software because they have PhotoStation 6 and QMaggy. They have facial recognition, just like the way I just described it from Synology, but they also have object recognition still active. So again, it will identify things in the photos. If you ask it to search your photos and look for trees, it's gonna find trees. But not only if you look up food, will it find food, but you can be very precise. For example, when I've done tests with QMaggy, and I've been out having a few drinks with the mates, because let's face it, we're all human, pre-pandemic and we'd all go out and have a few drinks not only would it recognize the faces and the people 
but it would say drink and then it would say beer it would say cocktail it would say spirit it would and it would identify individual drinks by the photos it was that sophisticated that along with the QNAP platform having multimedia console a single uh, portal access point to manage the indexing and the thumbnails to have a much faster generation and intelligent indexing in the background really improves things and then you've got photo station 6 which allows you to have that professional output that i described for your business to share your photos whether that's for personal finance or whether you just want to present your photos in the most presentable um, um kind of image conscious fashion overall the 973ax may seem a bit overkill at a grand but it's the most sophisticated mix at that price point of a photo editing station and photo sharing with ai support throughout and finally sticking with qnap this is another nas that has been in my top photo nas and top nas for a number of years originally released in 2018 the QNAP TVS 872 XT is really holding on since 2018. This is their 8 bay solution, arriving at between two to two and a half thousand dollars, depending on the configuration. This is a beast of a system. Now, just to get it out of the way early doors, it does practically everything the previous QNAP did that I just described. It doesn't have the U2 NVMe ports, but it has standard NVMe ports just sitting there waiting to be used inside. It features a six core i5 processor, hugely important. It arrives with 16 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded up to 64 gig, crazy town. It has 10 gigabit ethernet on board, great stuff, but it also has four Thunderbolt ports. So four active Mac or Windows Thunderbolt users can patch in and edit photos over Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt directly with the device. And remember, that leaves your 10 GBE to go to the local area network for sharing, editing, and more. On top of that, the system also has, again, the bank of hard drive bays and the two um, NVMe ports inside. There's even upgrade slots via PCIe that allow you to install everything from increased network interface ports, such as more 10 GBE, to add cards that allow you to add more NVMe's for super fast editing of photos there. There's even combo cards like this one that allow you to have both on a single card, a 10 gigabit ethernet port and two NVMe ports on board, thereby drastically improving the amount of super fast storage space for you to edit your photos on via Thunderbolt, 10 GBE and more. And then the whole time you've still got access to QMaggy and PhotoStation, professional output, AI support, with the added benefit that QNAP now on their NASs that have U2 NVMe slots on them don't have to use them for storage. You can install the Google Coral TPU 25 quid upgrade and use its enhanced AI support to drastically improve the AI processes on your NAS. So again, this may be the most expensive NAS here on the table, but it is the most professional photo NAS. If you're a professional photographer or if you are a host site for photos like um you know stock photos and stuff like that this is a great nas to house everything and share it in the most professional fashion yes you can host a website from it but this allows you to create those shares direct from the nas in a secure highly encrypted credential linked non-savable time managed password protected fashion and when it comes to photography there is very few NASs that will ever beat this. And this NAS has been out since 2018. QNAP got it incredibly future-proof then. And even now, at the start of 2022, it's still turning heads. But this has been the three NASs I recommend the most for photography at the start of 2021. Remember, I went more expensive as I went through it. You may not need all those features at the end. There are other NASs in between, and three isn't a big number. So if you do need help choosing the right NAS for you and your photography needs, Go to the link in the description to NAS Compares. There is a free advice section manned by me and Eddie the web guy. We provide this service free. We, As I say, we don't charge. We don't do anything with your email. There's donate buttons. Use them. Ignore them. It's your call. Again, we're just there to help. But we are two humans who have lives. And it's a very busy service. So it might take us a day or two to answer your inquiry. But we do try to answer everyone. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. It helps me understand what I'm doing right. It makes each video better than the last and on top of that click subscribe and the bell to be notified as we talk more and more about the wonderful world of data storage and NAS for photos and more in 2022. I will see you next time.